I am. I never uh, saw a sample. I never saw that sample. Yeah, you're wearing. We're it not right recording. Now. No. Oh. <laughs> We're not recording. The red lights. Oh. Oh. Leave. 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 Red lights. Leave. 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 You can't hear it, but but we can. Okay, great. And are we streaming? Uh, yeah, it's streaming. Frick We're yeah. actually ready to go. Are you guys, oh, are you guys really fired? fantastic yeah. and exciting. Now that you can do this, are you guys firing the other guy? Cut, cut cost. If you're listening, Absolutely. no. <laughs> no, we <laughs> no, desperately need them. Sweating our asses <laughs> off for the last 15 minutes because nothing was working. Yeah. Turns out none of us are big tech guys. Yeah. But we're huge content guys. We're millennials and we're not good at tech. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so I can't good wait at to tech. have kids so I can ask them questions. Yeah. How the hell do you twitch a thing? How do I put it out? Post videos to Facebook. Am I sending this to you or to uh, my friend lists? <laughs> I want to send it to Marilyn. Where's the, where's my <laughs> buddy list? Mom say about YouTube? Like download Oh, she, my mom said, she says, do a YouTube, do a YouTube. and download it on email. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what download it on email means. Do you wanna Does that mean send an email or read one? Do you want to do a podcast can we oh. download it on a podcast <laughs> oh yes life is too short for pants but it's just long enough for the chubby's podcast uh, the greatest podcast of all time i am your host joey avery and we have a very special edition of the chubby's podcast today featuring the living legend himself who we will introduce most uh, fully shortly. Screwed that up already. Travis wow. Mills. Most fully shortly. Most but, uh, fully shortly. Yeah. <laughs> I am an idiot, and my name is Joey Avery. Start yeah. over. Start yeah. over. <laughs> hey, welcome. Uh, but we do. We Who got will you interview most least next? <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see. That's the most exciting thing about this show. Uh, we do have a I'm great sorry, show. Twitchers. Today, we've got a bad monologue. Our Millennial Zone today is Millennials and Disney. Uh, most specifically, is it okay for childless Millennials to be flocking to the happiest place on Earth? But for our introductions, no. <laughs> Why not? Why not? <laughs> we're going to get, get there. deep. We're yeah. going to get deep on this. Debate. I've yeah. got some, oh, I've come it. with some things. Uh, <laughs> but starting with a man who generates so much buzz, they call him the beekeeper. He is the Broadway Bedouin, ace of the apiary, everybody's honeybee. It's the snack man, Dr. Phil Mills. Bzzz. Yes. Where did the doctor come from? Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil. Oh, Dr. He has yeah. a television That's show. It. Certainly I've not Phil's education. <laughs> right, right, right. I have, do a, do- have a doctor. Well, I mean, I, ca- I can perform surgeries. Oh, yeah. and I am have. in no way licensed. Right. But right. I have. That's yeah. But uh, should I? That's up for debate. Yeah. <laughs> Have I? Absolutely. Is it le- yes. illegal? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> depends. It depends uh, on what you're into. Yes. And next up, we have the beast of bachelor parties and warden of weddings, the socialite who isn't very light at all, the two-bill <laughs> legend and king of content. It's our juice-drinking friend, Mace, the juice man, Robinson. I am sad to report. Tell them. I lost 20. I weigh 185 now. That is Bullshit. I know. <laughs> I hate myself. Uh, there be, goes your branding. I used to be a unit. There goes your branding. Yeah. An absolute unit. And now and you're an absolute a scrawny <laughs> little loser. You, we're basically all, all the same way at this and point. That, it pains me. Uh, I could uh, catch yeah. up to you. Prove it. That's true, actually. I think you, I'm 160? 178. I'm 182. Dang. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Yeah, real close. We're in a running gun battle. I know. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> Unit of the podcast is is up for contention. Uh, but our guest today actually has some real accolades, so I don't <laughs> have to make up bullshit <laughs> about what makes them interesting. Uh, because today we have a Purple Heart and Bronze Star recipient, a New York Times bestselling author, inspirational speaker, and Chubby's enthusiast. Uh, most importantly, he's a dude with a kick-ass mustache, and as yes. I learned at dinner last night, way more jokes than I have. <laughs> he's the mountain biking, boat driving, ass-kicking legend, Travis, the far superior Mills, Mills. I can oh, see well, you. <laughs> you. I, I didn't want to say anything, but uh, I'm also a doctor doctor. Oh, you're, <laughs> you're, you're uh, I'm a, uh, a legitimate, real legitimate, like, uh, two honorary doctorates. I showed up at dinner um, the night before, and then the next day they gave me a doctorate so, <laughs> at Unity College and then Bates College. I only had to speak at one of them, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really, um, you know, I didn't want to say anything about you not, you know, right. not being a real doctor. Getting doctorate. there yet. Maybe <laughs> you know. you'll get a doctorate. I'll get there. You might get an honorary doctorate for being in a bunch of Instagram ads. 
It's um, possible. <laughs> it, you know what? It is possible. Hold out yeah. hope. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. Possible. And my uh, my my buddy, his wife's an actual dentist, so he gets super mad when I'm like, "Yeah, I'm a doctor." And he's like, "No, you're not." <laughs> you're like, mm. he's like, she went to school for that. I'm like, I had seven years of recovery. You know, and I've saved people. I've saved people from you know doing things to themselves or like put them on the track. But I understand how I'm not a real doctor. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, and boy, does that just make him feel awful? Yeah. He tries to argue it, and then he can't. Yeah. <laughs> because it's like, yeah, I lost. You know, I don't know if you told. I mean, whatever. I you know, I uh, like, yeah, I lost my arms and legs. To learn how to rehabilitate myself and help people through their situations, but you're right, I don't help anybody. So yeah. <laughs> the, the emails that I another get, slouch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The emails I get and the guy that like told me all his whole plan was to shoot himself one like the next Thursday. He was like my, my uh, limo driver one or my black car service driver in Utah. And I was like, yeah, Zach, I don't help anybody. I'm not really a <laughs> I'm, I'm doing nothing in life. You're right, but you know what? Help. At least you saved a couple cavities. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, she's a legit doctor, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's not. Yeah, he's not. He's oh, just, he's just an asshole. Yeah. He doesn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't do it. He's just mad that he doesn't have one. And you have yeah. two, and he's like, why don't you just give yeah. me one? He's a stay-at-home, you know, like he's a house dad. So right. It's really, I mean, he has an IT company, but he's not that great. Every time people call <laughs> I mean, every time he's get a phone call, people call him like something's broke. <laughs> Complaining. Yeah. yeah. He never gets like, hey, man, thanks for all the work you do. Great it's always job. like, hey, why isn't this working? I'm like, Zach, do you ever do anything right? <laughs> and, if, and, no. And, and truth be told, it's because that's what his job is. If it, something breaks or something wrong. So, like, you hear about it. Yeah, but he fixes it. And that's <laughs> how he keeps it going, though. You fix it, you short term fix, and then you yeah. get then they need you later. customer they need you. base. Yeah. Well, have you seen the show True Blood? Yeah. The, yeah, like, that's what they, you know, they had the, the, they could save everybody, but why would they do that when they could make the, the drink that could prolong their life just enough they had to buy more? Yeah. You know exactly. what I mean? It's, it's, ar- it's arbitrage. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah. It's a business podcast. It's how Apple works. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that is a business plan. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, I forget something. There's your business for the day. Yeah. This podcast is in the business. It's section. like built-in mm-hmm. obsolescence, <laughs> but mm-hmm. it's like, it's worse. So, Intentional. It, yeah. Yeah. So, Travis, we're going to get into your story here shortly, but we do like to start off every show with some very, very bad jokes, mm-hmm. uh, especially when it's been a big week in the news. <laughs> it's Joey's Bad Monologue. Oh, come on. I haven't even started yet. Oh, boo to you. Give me a chance. Okay, big week in the news, a three-eyed snake. <laughs> was found in Australia. I, I, I. Oh, come on. Wow. Nope. That's pretty good. So you're leading off with no, that no, one. No, that no. is pretty good. I didn't, I didn't like it at all. Reports suggest <laughs> people who use more emojis have more sex and get more dates. I wonder if that's true. Thumbs up, wink face, eggplant, <laughs> eyeballs, smiley face, kissy face, wet. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. No peach pretty good. in there. <laughs> Nah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I'm an eggplant man. A lot of egg, eggplant. You can only pick one produce. <laughs> that's true, actually. You can only You're pick one. You committed to eggplant. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder oh, that's, that's pretty true. good. Okay. That was better. Uh, a nope. French. Press, not impressed. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> we, we might have to have you round out some of these because you've got a, you've got a few jokes. jokes. He does. Yeah. But <laughs> a French waiter was shot for being too slow with a sandwich. Sounds like the assailant wasn't much of a waiter. Nice. Huh? Oh, but now wow. the waiter has that was become a, dad joke a right patient. There. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty yeah. good. I think, I think the waiter actually, didn't he die? Well, you know, I don't know. Maybe. I don't read the articles. Yeah, I just true. look at the headlines yeah. and fly through. All right, a pair of <laughs> 80-somethings. <laughs> <laughs> just, just gloss over. Just yeah, just yeah, yeah. Over. That's yeah. how we do this. A pair of 80-somethings were caught having sex in the Connecticut woods. Hey, I'm just impressed with anyone who can experience woods at that age. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> Stop saying pretty good. That's how I do these. <laughs> Wait, did you, you have to. Pretty did good. you say pretty good yourself? Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. Everybody That's likes it. to laugh their own jokes. I yeah. <laughs> Pretty good, Joey. After Pretty a good. shitty joke, you just you smooth it out and uh-huh. you let people know how good it was. And the yeah. answer is always pretty. How Pretty good. good. Was that Pretty how good. was your best joke today? Yeah. The the finally, the one? that one. He, the woods. Devin loves it. Yeah, you Devin. Like, yeah Devin. Devin is is dying. <laughs> Producer Devin really enjoys yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I like it when people laugh at their own jokes. It's yeah, really but that, he's that means one person's laughing. Right. <laughs> yeah, you can't bomb if you think you're hilarious. Try yeah. that on stage oh, I, tonight. I, I, I can, yeah, I've bombed before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Wasn't it wasn't funny? funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny. And finally, no joke here, but England's UKIP party has elected a new leader, Dick Brain. 
no joke here. I just want a <laughs> sincere well wishes to Dick Brain. <laughs> That's his name. I wish you luck, Dick Brain. <laughs> Congratulations on your erection. I mean election. Huh? Wow. Good. Uh, That's I mean- actually his name? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey, Dick Brain. That's insane. <laughs> That's like it's basically it's Dickhead. Mm-hmm. I feel like he was probably motivated by his name getting a lot. You know, you get bullied, and then he's like, "Oh yeah, guess what? I'm gonna lead a major party in the UK." And that's. Do you think his name's Richard? Richard. Yes, Brain? it is, and he chose. He leaned Dick. into it, man. Yes. All right. Bold. Good, Good man. For him. Just owning it. He's yeah. owning it. Okay. It's like. People are like, hey, listen, Dick Brain, and he's, and he's like, like yeah, yes. that's right. Yeah. Oh, what do you have to say? I lead you. I'm all ears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Montgomery on Twitch said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tom's yes, not, we've got him. <laughs> Tom's not a fan of the potty humor. Oh, yes, Tom's not into it. <laughs> nope. It's tough, but, but most news is sad. So you know, you got to go with the fun ones. You go there. with potty. Yes. It's potty or sad. Potty yes. Good. I've always said that. Now, do you have any? You got any? You got any one-liners for us? Any heaters? Mm, mm-hmm. Boy, put me on the spot like that. I don't. <laughs> you know, nothing really. I can think of. Okay. Off the top of my head. This is the exact reverse of last yeah. night. Because at dinner, you asked me, and I was like, "Yeah, I don't have anything." <laughs> and right. then you had four, and you just <laughs> well, buried me. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, "You know what? Welcome, to, welcome to my world, well, Travis." Okay, here's the th- you haven't really explained like anything about like what happened to me and things like that so if i tell jokes that are in bad taste without knowing about me like people will, like oh, well that's a Tom perfect would, yeah. that's a perfect segue let's but let's talk about jokes what did the fish say when he hit the wall what damn <laughs> <laughs> and it's not it's not swearing it's yeah not swearing. <laughs> that's good oh, yeah, yeah. Nice. what do you call a cow with no legs a cow yeah Ground beef. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, I got dad jokes. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm a legitimate dad. Those so. are good. Yeah, yeah, I don't have those yet. That's why I have potty humor jokes, because I'm a child. Once you have kids, you can sneeze loudly. Mm-hmm. I do and that. And you can tell bad jokes. You can jokes. pull this car over. Yes, so help mm-hmm. me God, you I will do it. You can turn this car around. See, yes. I'm, I'm that dad that uh, bribing's my thing. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Like, my wife is like, you know, she'll be stern, and I'm like, hey, look. <laughs> like, to my son, like, Dax, I need you to go in the house. He's two. I'm like, you need to go in the house. And he's like, <laughs> No. And I can't chase him. So I'm like, you want a cookie? Yes. Yeah. yeah I want a co- so I'm like, go in the house, I'll give you a cookie. So I just give him a cookie. Oh. It works. Had, yeah, it's I smart. Mean, the eighth cookie of the day, my wife's like, why do you keep giving this kid cookies? I'm like, because you won't listen to anything else. You're yeah. teaching right. him about the economy. Yeah. It works, though. I have also a kid who just turned two, and I just discovered recently that bribery. I, I was literally just telling someone about it. I was like, I can bribe him now. Yeah. I can tell him to do stuff. I can also tell him that I can do the, the take, like the, the opposite, the inverse bribe. If you don't do that, then we won't. Do this. Oh yeah, and then yeah. he he will respond to that. But if you have nothing to bribe him with, I found you have to, I have to make up. I have to find things to bribe him with. Yeah, and uh, even if they're like he non-existent. Wins. Yeah, so you I'll just like, lie to him. <laughs> like, I will yeah. get you a dragon. Okay. I'll be. Uh, otherwise, we won't uh, give you the cookie <laughs> that I don't have yet. <laughs> and we won't like, go for ice cream. Yeah. We're not getting ice cream if you don't get it. Exactly. Right yeah. Now. yeah, yeah like, we never that. had a plan to. <laughs> yeah. But that's what you have to do. It that's works. smart. Yeah. That's a good technique. That's very he was smart. Doing, he was doing something once. Uh, he, he he wouldn't put any of his clothes on. He was running around naked. And yeah. he was refusing to put clothes on. And Sounds I was like, Zach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was chasing him around. And I was like, what the hell do I say? He doesn't want anything right now except to be naked. So I had to try and come up with stuff that I could like bl- bribe him with that had nothing to do with anything. It's we were it's doing. the same way as like dealing with a like a drunk friend who doesn't want to go home. Yes. And they're like, I don't want to leave the party. And you're like, but we could get Taco Bell. And they're like, okay. And then they get in an Uber, they fall asleep, and you're like, go home. That's exactly. Drop what them saying. off at home. It works out perfect. Yeah. I like uh, having the drunk friend because I'm like, we can get Taco Bell. If they fall asleep, I'm still getting. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> Just I'm still getting, getting more. Yeah, I'm gonna Taco order Bell. theirs. Yeah. If they're asleep still, I'm eating. That's taking right. it. Yeah. Good. Uh, loaded Chipotle chicken griller. Let me tell you something. Oh, <laughs> so good. You should <laughs> talk to Tom Montgomery yeah. about that. Oh yeah. Oh, Chipotle actually, down the street. When I just I just ate though, like I had. <laughs> well, we could go again. But um, <laughs> yeah, loaded chicken Chipotle griller. Dollar twenty nine. So That's man. actually very funny because we did have some audience questions sent in for you, and one of them actually came from Tom, and it's about your favorite fast food. So we'll hold on to that, okay. even though it's very topical right now, because I do think. Uh, we want to get into your story. Obviously, um, you're here because it happened to intersect with Chubby's, um, but would love to hear more about, b- basically to set the stage, so Travis is one of five surviving quadruple amputees from the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. You're a Purple Heart, which I mentioned. You've launched a foundation that helps both veterans and their families. So I would just love to hear kind of where it all started for you. Yeah, so you know when a man loves a woman, um, <laughs> they have their first child after being married, and they didn't get what they wanted, my sister, and, you know, and then 
<laughs> April 14th happened in 1987 when their favorite child was born, me. That's right. <laughs> and that's where it all started. Uh-huh. And um, I have a little brother as well, but he's not that great. So um, <laughs> fast forward, high school sports, everything like that was going really well for me. And then I went ahead and went to college to play some football. And after the season was over, because I played this new position I never played before. Oh, my gosh. Uh, sideline. It's crazy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's a good yeah. one. I've yeah. actually played that in a few you sports. Can, yeah. comfortable. Tell, looking yeah. at yeah. Comfortable. Joey Well, I was good at some other things. You know. <laughs> well, so, not Whatever. <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> so, uh, so, <laughs> so I ended up um, getting asked to play baseball at the college, and I had a girlfriend back home two and a half hours from home, uh, from where I was at, and and I was like, hey, uh, the coach wants me to play baseball here. And she's like, aren't you move home, you know, for me? And I'm like, why would I, why would I do that? <laughs> and she's like, because I love you. I went, oh, right, right. So 18-year-old me in my own, you know, apartment, two and a half hours from mom and dad, playing college sports was like, yeah, I'm moving home. So I went home like two, you know, like two weeks later. I happened to meet her boyfriend, Colin, or, uh, randomly. Yeah. Um, so that wasn't cool. So I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah. So like I joined the <laughs> Army. And then when you look back at my life, like, how did this even happen? Like, how did I have no arms and legs? And you realize it's actually, it's her fault. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that. Yeah. I know, right? It's so heavy. Yeah. Yeah, I know. So, um, actually, so I, I, uh, I'm going to be speaking now for a living, and I perfected that joke. I knew I was going to speak near my hometown in Michigan where a lot of her friends work, Mm -hmm. and I had to get this joke right. Right. For, like, nine months, I did, like, I don't know, 15 um, different engagements throughout the nation plus local ones, and I nailed that and got it all right. So I went to this (laughs) company that's, like, 400 employees. I know some of them still hang out with her and stuff. (laughs) And I told that joke for the first time, and they were like, (gasps) oh. And you watch because I, I was you know, all friends from high school. Like I, I know them all. And if she went to a different school, but I was friends, friends with all them. And you watch some of their faces go. Oh. And I <laughs> Just go, a and ripple. I, yeah. And, I'm like, and, I, and during that joke, I was like, and I'm not gonna say like her name's Amanda. You know. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> you, got, you know, and she and from Millington, and I said her last name and stuff. And her friends like. Oh. <laughs> and like her parents and my parents were like friends. So like her mom like called my mom and dad like, why would he even say she's the devil? And it's like, well, the shoe fits, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, my dad gave me a lecture, and I was like, "Remember that time when, like, I was an adult with kids?" And yeah, yeah. sorry, bro. Don't, that dog don't hunt no you more. You think I'm not gonna throw this smoke? You're yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You're crazy. That's all I got left. Yeah. So, um, anyways, so I joined the military out of spite for her and her boyfriend to really show her a lesson. And uh, you know what? Yeah. Take yeah. this. Take, yeah, in your face. Yeah. And uh, end up getting through basic training in airborne school and make it to Fort Bragg, and I deployed for 15 months. And while I'm over there, I meet a girl online because uh, her brother was my medic. And when I saw that picture pop up for the friend request on MySpace, I was like, oh, my damn, you know, like, that's a dating site for sure. And I went hit delete. And it turns out her last name matched my medic's last name. So I was like, I better not delete this yet. So I did some, some searching, and I was like, that's my medic's little sister. He never told me about her. We hang out every day. And um, she was 18 in college, and I was 20 in Afghanistan, and she thought I looked pretty good. But uh, to be honest, I was taking supplements that I found in Germany. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Unit. Yeah. So I was like six Off three. License. Yeah. So I was six three two seventy five at the time. Um, I was I was squatting like my squats were like I started at four fifty and I would go up to five fifty. So I did eleven sets of ten. So 11 sets, 10 reps each. And oh. like, uh, yeah, yeah. So Those I had a real German addition. supplements coursing yeah. through your veins. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's called Sus Non 250 and Decadurabalin. Not that I recommend it. It's not a Duma. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was ginormous. <laughs> and uh, first time we ever met, like, she was 18, I was 20, and uh, we decided to go to Mexico. I was like, hey, you want to go on vacation? I've been here like 11 and a half months. I get. Pick um, up some more supplements down yeah. there. <laughs> some Mexican yeah, I didn't have to. I didn't have to. So, like, uh, it was, I was deployed 15 months and they give me um, 18 days of R&R, they call it. And I waited 11 and a half months to take mine. So, like, I flew in to Michigan, had Christmas with my family. Uh, I flew to Dallas to pick her up. She was 18, like I said, in college. And I, I knocked on the door. You know, her dad answered the door, looking up at me, his knees trembling, you know. <laughs> Please don't hurt me, sir. And I'm like, I'm speaking not, you know, German. My daughter. Uh, and I'm like, I'm mumbling gonna, at him in a different language. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not going to hurt you, buddy. And he's like, oh, th- thank you. You know, and I gave him a little noogie. And I said, now, now get out of here. And I smacked him on the butt. And, you know, he went about his Where's your daughter? Yeah. Yeah. I'm that never happened. For you. That, ha- that, that never actually uh, happened that way. But uh, so I went to Mexico for a week and then back to Michigan for a week. And I went back overseas. And uh, I came back after being deployed and uh, we got married and. 
Um, got an apartment and a dog and deployed again. My second deployment was a lot more exciting than my first. My first one, I just like went on missions every day, came back, ate hot food, lifted weights three hours, um, and then you know repeat did it again the next day. Then the second deployment, I threw a lot more grenades. I got firefights and uh, pretty intense in, in um, you know adrenaline pumping yeah. kind of deployment. And then uh, I came back from that. And then four months after I got back, my wife and I finally were going to have a baby. We bought a house. And it was so cool because a lot of my other buddies, like, when they got back four months later, their wife had a baby, you know. <laughs> and they're, um, like, yeah. uh, they're like, yeah. oh, wait a minute. So uh, I'm not good at math. But these guys are like, oh, my gosh, it's a miracle. And you're like, it's not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, mm, no. No. And like, it's premature. And it's like, that baby's 12 pounds. So, <laughs> you know. No. But, uh, <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. Mm, doesn't work that way. So, uh, anyways, we had we had our daughter in September of '11, and I, I uh, deployed for a third time. I didn't have to deploy; I she had orders to take me somewhere else. And um, you know, my guys came from all across the nation, looked up to me. Uh, I had a pretty good um, position in my unit, and I went to my my commanding sergeant major, and I said, you know, I got these orders to Fort Hood. I can't really accept them. I have to deploy with my men. Uh, it's not fair to them, and and things like that. And he's like, yeah, I understand. So he canceled my order so I could deploy. My wife understood it. I had nine month <coughs> deployment. And I'm a third one. I went over there, and um, a lot more firefights. Like every day was a constant. And uh, I'm about a month and a half in. I set my backpack down on a bomb accidentally. I mean, I didn't see it coming, right? And uh, it took off my right arm, right leg automatically that day. And uh, I landed on the left side of my left side of my face. And when I rolled over, my left leg, if you imagine your ankle bone touching your left thigh, it was just like snapped through the bone, dangling. Oh. And then my left arm was blown out at the wrist, but I still had use of my thumb, index, and middle finger. But the pinky and ring finger were mangled up pretty bad. So I rolled over my back, and the first thing I thought was, like, you know, I'm not going to make it. But in my head, I kept seeing Saving Private Ryan, like the movie, when the medic gets shot in the stomach and he cries out for his mom and dad. Yeah. And, like, shows that fear, and I never showed fear. I was the first in a firefight, uh, last out. I never actually ducked for cover, except for one time. Um, I had a sniper around cracked next to my head, so I ducked in. And I was so mad at myself, I jumped up on top of the berm and I ripped off a magazine and a half of rounds at it, uh, at the sniper. But, um, but I just I told myself, like, don't let this be the last memory you guys have of you. And um, I don't know, my medic, Dan Bateson, started working on my right side of my body. My platoon sergeant, Sergeant Hambright, worked on my left side of my body. And as they're working on me, I'm telling them to save my guys. I had two guys injured, uh, Brandon and Ryan. And I was like, don't worry about me. I'm fine. Like, whatever happens, happens. But I'm probably not going to make it. So just fix them. And they, like, ignored that. And within 20 seconds, they had tourniquets in all four limbs. And then um, they got me on a helicopter. The other medic came over. So I'm laying on the ground, not knowing what to do with myself. And I'm telling them, leave me alone. They're still working on me. Uh, I rated my LT with my left hand that I had left, and I told my uh, lieutenant, I said, hey, I need your medic with mine. I got guys injured. So Doc Voice came over, worked on those two, worked on me. Um, they got me into the helicopter finally. And while I was on the helicopter, they had, like, this protective goop they put in your eye. Mm-hmm. And uh, from the rotor wash of the helicopter and stuff like that. So I, it was, like, kind of looking through beer goggles. But <laughs> as I'm on there, one of my guys is yelling out in a lot of pain. Um, and he had every right. Like, he was dinged up pretty good. And I was, like looking through my eyes, and I couldn't really tell who it was, but I told the flight medic to uh, give my guys water. But how he said it was, hey, hey, and I yelled. I said, take your helmet off. But I undid my arm from the strap, and I took it over my head and motioned for him to take his helmet off, and I said some choice words. I can't say on the radio. Uh, I probably could, but I'm not going to. Uh, but I said, take your helmet off, give my guys water, and then I winked at the one guy and said, you're going to be fine, and they got me into the um, hospital. And as they're rolling me in, I kept trying to sit up. You know, right arm's gone, right leg's gone, left leg's tape like duct tape to my thigh and uh or medical tape to my thigh my left arm is you know still there but as i'm sitting up they're pushing me down i kept telling them, quit touching me i'm fine leave me alone uh i got back to my guys and then they said look i don't know how you're still awake sergeant mills but uh you need to go sleep so they knocked me out and they took me into 14 hours of surgery with nine doctors and seven nurses and when they were working on me um they started to undress me my left leg came off uh i know it sounds I'm very right. nonchalant. Like, yeah, my left leg, like, it just popped <laughs> off. And then, like, right. I had a sandwich. And, yeah. You, know, <laughs> you know how they do Weird yeah. day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Weird day. Sipped so on you never went song. into shock? You just... No, no. And it's weird. I didn't. I didn't. Um, I just... I think it's because I kept myself so calm. I just told myself yeah. the last memory that your men are going to have is is just you being like, hey, it's fine. Whatever happens, happens. It's not your fault. Thanks for trying, but don't worry about me. I'll be fine. And, um, you know, knowing that my wife would have got what they call a TSGLI, which is like $500,000, you know, check from the Army to take care of her and Chloe. And um, while the medics were working, or the nurses were working on me, I kept saying, like, my little girl, am I ever going to see her again? That's when it started to fade in. They knocked me out. And um, that's the last thing I said to the nurse, and I passed out from the medication. And then um, two nurses for nine hours pumped air out of my lungs. I had uh, 
so much blood transfusions, they had to write a new standard operating procedure. I had over 400 units of blood given to me. And my, I'm an A-positive guy. Um, not so much like GPA status, but like I'm talking <laughs> about like <laughs> overall my blood type. And um, it's, it actually ended up changing. So I, I had a different Whoa. blood type because they had to like like O negative or whatever. They gave me so much. Wow. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. And I got to meet some of the nurses. I got this really gnarly picture of all the blood bags that they had to use. It's like just so many blood bags. Um, but uh, but yeah. So then uh, that happened. My brother in law was informed what happened. We're still really good friends. Still are today. But he was in a different part of Afghanistan. So he flew in. Um, because it, it's the weirdest thing. It's called a blue book. And when you deploy, I had to wrote, uh, write three blue books. When you deploy you basically plan your funeral. So, like, you have to go through and check the box of, like, do I want a military or civilian funeral? You know, do I want to be buried with a um, wedding ring? What, what do you want? Like, I wanted a picture of me and my wife my, and uh, my daughter and my wedding ring to be buried with. I wanted to have this song played. I wanted – so it's real morbid. And then if you get hit, like, when you die, you get to pick somebody to escort your body back to your family if you want. So I obviously had Josh to escort me back to Kelsey and my mom and dad. But um, he got called because they weren't sure if I was going to make it or whatever. And he came into Kandahar, and then they got me stable but critical, flew me to Bagram on April 12th. They took my left hand the rest of the way off that time because my skin had died. So I became a quadruple amputee. And then on April 14th, they woke me up for the first time in launch stool. And when I woke up, you know, it was that, uh, it was that, that sinking feeling of, like, am I a bad person? Does God hate me? What did I do wrong in life? Like, how am I going to be a husband and a father? And, and, the, and the biggest question I honestly had was, um, you know, why didn't I just die? Like, how is this better than dying? And uh, my brother-in-law was there. The doctors and nurses come talk to me. I kept ignoring them. And finally, uh, my brother-in-law, after like three hours of that, me silence, and just whenever he'd come talk to me, I looked the other way. I was uh, able to, you know, talk to him. And he was like, hey, man, like, I don't know what you're going through, but you got to call your wife and your, you know, your parents. So I said, fine. So I called my wife, and the first thing I told Kelsey was, what's up? I'm fine, you know, love you, bye. I didn't want to have a conversation and talk about it. And then my mom and dad, same thing, basically. And then my mom was like, hey, happy birthday, by the way, because it was my 25th birthday that day. Jeez. So I found out <laughs> I had no arms and legs on my 25th birthday. And then um, three days after that, I arrived at Walter Reed, and I was able to see my wife for the first time. But it wasn't that Hallmark moment you'd think. Like, she hugs me. He's like, we'll be together forever. I'm here for you. <laughs> um, my right leg split open. <laughs> and oh. they're like, uh, Mrs. Mills, you're in charge of medical care now. His right leg is split. Um we need to take two inches off his right leg or he'll bleed out and die. And they gave her a clipboard to sign. And she was so nervous. And I was like, just sign the clipboard. Just sign, you know, yelling right. at her. Like, it's okay. Just sign it. And then the next day I told her, you know, hey, like, uh, you don't got to do this. You're 23. I'm 25. Take all that money that we have saved up, the house, the cars, whatever. It's yours. And financially, whatever I do, I can do, I will. And she's like, that's not how this works, you know. So she stayed. And, um, and we just kind of pushed forward from there. So... I've given you guys a lot to process. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I feel bad because from three to four, that's the same story I, I have to tell everybody because yep. the shark bite one's not going to work. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I um, kept getting back in the water. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, but um, the, and the worst thing, and it's in my book, but the worst thing I truly have done with my injury was when I first was at the hospital going to my appointments, like, I don't know, three weeks after I got blown up, this little girl was staring at me, drinking a Subway cup, and it was like brown soda in there. She's probably seven. I don't know. <laughs> She's staring at me, like, turned around, looking right at me, staring. And her mom's looking at her, looks at me, and is like, hmm, whatever. I'm like, wrong move, lady. <laughs> so I, like, lean in. I'm like, you know who did this to me? And her eyes got real big. <laughs> and I said, the boogeyman in the closet and the monster under your bed. And they're coming for you next. <laughs> and Drama! Yeah. It's like, I, I, look, Tom, I'm sorry if I upset you on that one. But I'm not proud of it. But at the same time, like, I, I'm happy I did it for the story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, like, the little girl's like, you know, like, and they started, like, crying a little bit. I was like, Ugh. I was like, yeah, that's right. Don't stare at me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and now when, now when kids stare at me, I'm like, I'm like, hey, check it out. I got cool tricks. And I spin my, you know, hand in a circle and whatnot. Yeah. So, like, it's just, it's just adapting and overcoming. And, like, I had the kid in the elevator at the airport. He's like, oh, my gosh. And he asked all these questions. And I'm like, I'm okay with questions. But then he's like, well, that's, like, so creepy and <laughs> scary to look at i'm like wow kid you're like 11 you should have a filter and your mom and dad are just staring at you like what part of like do some parenting here guys? yeah, yeah like, this is a great yeah. teachable yeah. moment like, bribe the kid well like i'm okay with like kids like asking questions and stuff but when you're like 11 years old and your mom and dad are just like oh yeah, ooh, yeah you're right was, like i'm some kind of science project or like i had one lady at a at a party um like start feeling my leg and lift my shorts up. i'm like what are you what are you doing she goes oh it's not okay if i just i'm like Am I gonna come? Why lift, am, I gonna, why, am I gonna lift your dress up? <laughs> yeah, I'm just checking it out. Well, you know, I'm like, this isn't show and tell. Like, <laughs> like, uh, just. It's like, what do you yeah. think you're gonna find? <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> what, yeah. what is it that you're well, looking just, for? The way she was doing it, she's just like, 
pat me down, like lift my shorts. I'm like, what? I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. That's so is that not is awkward. that not okay? I'm like, you, no, of course it, not. <laughs> when, when would that be okay? <laughs> would you say that's the most annoying thing about how? our society processes people that have some disability is that like people just don't know how to handle it. So they freak well, out and do stuff that they would never do to like, well, they would never lift up my shorts. You know what I mean? Like well, that's just your looks. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but no, I'm kidding. You're, you're, Zing. You're kind of kidding. So, <laughs> yeah. so uh, I'll lift up your shorts. Later. I was waiting for the, like, you're a very handsome man. <laughs> uh, never came. <laughs> Yeah. Don't hold your breath. Yeah. So, anyways, um, no, you're a very handsome man. Is that what you want? To say? I don't know. You want something? Yeah. Very, Please. Yeah. 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 Do it. So, do just it. finish it. So, do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, mean it though. So, so no, I, I don't. I don't mind people asking questions. I don't mind people staring. When it becomes a science project, or like people are like, "Oh, you can touch his arm, sweetie. Touch his arm. Feel it. Yeah." So. So and I'm like that, just having I'm that like, conversation like you're not, not there. Without, yeah, like without asking me, like it's okay if I touch your arm and like, yeah. like some little kids, um, I can show them a handle spin or whatever, and they're like, oh, like they'll be like that's cool or whatever. And that, but then they some kids are like, spin it, spin the hand. And I'm spin like, it. okay, and they're like, spin it again now. And I'm like, oh, look, you little shit. Uh, <laughs> Make me a bicycle clown. <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's what it feels like. Yeah. And I'm like, oh yeah, I don't work for you. You can go away now. <laughs> but. Ah, oh, jeez, I tell you. And then, like, in Maine, everybody really knows me in Maine, which is which is pretty cool. And um, they've accepted me. Like, I'm from Michigan, but my wife's from Maine. Um, and I was like, hey, let's go to Michigan. And she said no. And I was like, what the? Like, I said it one more time, thinking maybe she changed change her mind. But she really, she just took my arm off. <laughs> yeah, and then she hit me with it. Like, yeah, stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. <laughs> but uh, everybody in Maine is pretty cool about everything. And uh, it's not like that weird anymore. But when I go other places, people will just, like this kid in the, in the airport, who wasn't from Maine, he was visiting you know, just like, well, that's real creepy, and like, oh, and then like they're having like a discussion about my about my arm right in front of me. My wife, my wife's like, she's a little more hot headed than me. She's like, I'm about to tell that little, sh-. you know, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's all right, like it's it is what it is, you know. I can't stop people from staring, so I might as well make make light of it. And I tell kids I work with Iron Man. I got jetpack legs, right <laughs> arm. I don't wear because there's missiles in it. <laughs> uh, you know. Can't bring it on the plane. <laughs> yeah, but then you got the one little kid like, we'll go fly then, just fly. And I'm like, uh. Later. No. <laughs> you know what? No. Yeah. In yeah. Maine, it feels like you're a celebrity. Like when, yeah. when we would go out, you were always getting approached and stopped, and we want to talk to you and get your autograph. And yeah, and and I and I love it. But Kelsey, like when we go out to dinner and stuff, like she has to, uh, we have to bring friends with us because I can't. Yeah. Not have a conversation, and like I got calls from some high up people in politics about running for office recently and they're like hey you want to do this and i'm like oh n- no <laughs> I yeah uh, I, I really don't they're like yeah but you know do you, you want to go from being universally loved to mostly hated yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly and they're like they're like yeah but you should and i'm like no i, I get what you're i hear i hear you <laughs> yeah I answered but i'm just you. not gonna do that right now <laughs> I, I got a text yesterday I'm, hey uh you haven't responded to my text um are you gonna you gonna do that i'm like no i told you that but um <laughs> but kelsey is more reserved than me my wife wonderful just amazing person but she's uh more introverted, so she's very uncomfortable, like, being in front of people and doesn't, like, I mean, she's, like, don't piss her off. Like, you'll find out. But we had this one guy that kind of basically screwed us over on our foundation um, for the first time we were doing it. And he tries to act like he's my friend. He has, like, all these stupid ideas. And I, I saw him at Panera Bread one morning. I just got back from, like, a five-day trip. And Kelsey and I dropped Chloe off at school before Dax was born. And we're sitting there at breakfast. And the guys were talking to me, like, oh, yeah, all right, cool, man. <laughs> and I'm really nice to people, right? And Kelsey goes, well, he just got back from a uh, five-day trip. We're having breakfast. And the guy's like, well, okay, I've been kicked out of nicer places than this. And uh, <laughs> she goes, yeah, okay. And, like, just, like, talked to me, like, awkwardly. Like, I was like, oh, oh shit, that was weird. <laughs> um, Pretended well, he's yeah. not there. So, like, the guy came back, talked to me, and Kelsey looks at him and goes, uh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> bye. I, like, I took my sandwich, and I was like, oh, that's so weird. <laughs> just, just stand there like, and she's like, "Yeah, bye." <laughs> and, like, look, and then like rolls like, and looks back at me and she's like, "Can you believe the?" Ner-? I'm like, "Oh, this is so awkward." <laughs> like, uh, you know, because like I'm a people person. I got and she's just like, and I, I mean, I wish I could tell the guy like, "Oh, hey, remember that time you thought we were friends?" Uh, yeah, <laughs> you actually screwed me over, and I, I don't like you. Yeah. And, you can't say what that. you yeah. Yeah. say. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and like basically, she's just, just like, "Go away, and never talk to me again." Yeah, exactly. and stop acting like we're friends because <laughs> you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't you can't do that. No. Yeah, no. good cop bad cop only yeah. goes so far. Yeah. Well, bad cop. You bad can't cop. bad cop bad cop. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Even with our kids, like I'm usually like the good cop until like I get like it's I don't know why she does it to me, but she undercuts my authority. I'm not sure if your wife does that to you or <laughs> if you're married. I can't tell. Yeah. I'm sorry, you got a kid and that's great. Yep. But either way, let's not <laughs> let me make it weird for you. That's all right. <laughs> uh, I don't do it with my hand. I don't oh, do it with my hand. <laughs> so anyway, I apologize. So 
<laughs> like, my wife will yell at the kids, and I'll, and I'll be like, the one, like, it's okay, just come hang out with me, you know? Then I yell at the kids, and she's like, don't don't yell at them like that. And she's like, my daughter, like, mommy said, I don't have to listen to you. I'm like, no, that's not, you can't do that. That's not true. Like, I'm, I'm an adult. I've got authority. Yeah. <laughs> I will do as I say. Yeah. Uh, if mommy says I have to, then I will. I remember something my mom told me when my son was born, and we were talking about parenting, and she was talking about how it's the authority thing is your parent. Uh, really is kind of a paper tiger. And like, it is, if, as long as you can con- continue to convince your kids that you have the authority over them, then it really works. But if you, cause I remember my mom would say like, it, especially as the kids get older, yeah. like they really could just, you know, they don't have to, listen. they don't have yeah. to, yeah. Yeah. but, you but if you can, if you, it starts young, if like you're a good parent, you're able to maintain this sort of respect for, uh, that they can have for you, then, then it will, it will work, but I, I think about that a lot because I was like, I, I see Jack, my son, and you know, he's just uh, maybe yours is going through this too. But he'll like, he says no to absolutely everything right now, even if it's something he wants and just suggest it. <laughs> he'll be like, I want to go outside, and I'll be like, Okay, we're gonna go, we're gonna go outside. Let's uh, can we get your shoes on? And uh, so you want to go outside? And he'd be like, No. And I'll be like, Do you want to stay inside? And he's like, No. And I'm like, Okay, okay. tough to please. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Strong just something right that you learn. And then Strong you name. I like that. Yeah. 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 It was it was on the top. Uh, like I was thinking, like for my son, it was either gonna be Travis. But my wife said no, because I'm like I name everything after myself. My foundation, my business, uh, my podcast, whatever. And um, but it was gonna be either. Jack, Henry, something like Henry's something my brother's son. Yeah, son's yeah, name. also but, a good name. But Dax is my medics to save me with Daniel and Alexander. So we just matched our names. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. great. That is yeah. solid. And it's already a badass name. Too. I know. So it, it has it a was, cool meaning. Oh yeah, and what's cool is I called them both that night uh, when I, we named them finally because it took like three days for us to name. Kelsey almost died during birth. No big deal. Whatever. <laughs> so anywho, um, <laughs> so we're not having any more children. She said, but whatever. She's in charge. I guess because uh, she takes my arms like puts me in the closet and then. <laughs> <laughs> I used to go to the corner, but I started butt scooting out. And she's like, no. No. Butt scooting. Yeah. So she throws me in the closet, so I, I can't turn a knob without my hand. On, so. Just this whole thing. You better open this door right now. Yeah. Yeah. Please. <laughs> Please. Um, but anyway, no, I'm just saying, strong name there. A good good yeah. call. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was the whole authority thing, like. I don't know. My son, he'll run off and like he just does his like sideways look. Like you're gonna chase me, bro. And, like, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting in my wheelchair, you know, and he's like running around, and I'm like, get back! Oh, he's, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's running. <laughs> you know. I got uh, cookies in the wheelchair. Yeah. <laughs> I got cookies right here. Yeah. We um, so we left off the story. Obviously, you are basically at the hospital. Your wife's there, and I kind of want to get into mm-hmm. part of basically what gave you the idea for your foundation because it's all about yeah. not only helping veterans recover but helping them do it with their families. Yeah. So and I, I appreciate you getting us back on track. That's yeah. really nice of you. Um, <laughs> we could do parenting for the next hour. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That was amazing. That was a great pause. Yeah. That was incredible. Yeah. No noise. Yeah. yeah. Well done. There wasn't us even a Except cricket. for your fan. Yeah. Well done, yeah. us three. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, so uh, to really get into that. Um, I don't I, like how this podcast is balanced out. It's kind of turned against It you. does feel like a three-on-one. <laughs> <laughs> You're all looking me, at me right now. You're doing a great <laughs> job. Yeah, thanks. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Everybody needs a punching bag. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. verbally, we're going to abuse you, but mentally... We're going to abuse you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you won't hear it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just feel it. Yeah. But anyway, no, I'm just kidding. You're a champion. Don't ever forget Thank that, you. you winner. Thank you. Check it out. If you ever have a bad day, right, snap them fingers and wiggle them toes. <laughs> <laughs> you got me beat. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, uh, how bad can your day really be? It's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of physical humor yeah. going on anyway. if you're listening. For the <laughs> some, yeah, there's some some so, winks and some flexes. Yeah, but yeah. So, uh, so back at the hospital, when I told my wife she should leave me, she didn't. Um, after about two weeks, I realized like that. Every time I close my eyes and I hope and wish this didn't happen, how can I go back in time? How can I make this not, you know, be my my reality? Um, it just wasn't going to happen that way. So I decided that you know don't dwell on the past, reminisce what I had. I had 25 wonderful years with arms and legs, and I had one bad day at work and. It was just time to get back to work. So I started working out, and I started um, walking again. I had a hand to feed myself. Five weeks in, I had a hand to feed myself again. Two weeks, uh, I'm sorry, just tried two months. I was walking, um, driving, all this stuff. So 19 months of recovery at Walter Reed really flew by for me because I took every day as an opportunity to get better. And I did four hours of physical therapy, four hours of occupational therapy, um, eight-hour days, 40 hours a week, as much as I could because the therapist there and the staff was just phenomenal at Walter Reed. And um, what really got me over the edge was I had a Marine that flew in and he walked in my room as a robot about three weeks into my, or I'm sorry, five weeks into my recovery. 
And he, when he walked in, he's like, hey, man, welcome to the club. And I was like, I don't want to be in your club. And uh, he's like, kind of late now, don't you think? <laughs> and I looked at him, and he had two arms missing and two legs missing. I'm, like you said in the intro, I'm one of five, and I'm the fourth. And uh, Todd Nicely was the second. And he was like, hey, man, you're going to be fine. Um, and that kind of changed my whole outlook because when you sit there in the bed, and you're like, how am I going to do this? What's left for me? And then you come out of, like, the drug and do stuff they put me into. Uh, you realize that it's people out there living it. So I wanted to do it. I wanted to get better for my, my family and, and uh, not, you know, worry about – you know, how am I going to do it? But more just like, just get it done. Because uh, at 25 years old, I figure, you know, people now live to like 80, right? So that's that's a lot of time left, mm-hmm. yeah. you know? So why be miserable the rest of my life? And um, I would meet everybody in the room, be the first person that they met and become a mentor to them. But then I went, and as I was recovering, I went on these trips with the hospital. Learned how to go downhill mountain biking, uh, snowboarding, Holy kayaking. Shit. Yeah, so they took me up this mount, uh, mountain in Mount Crested Butte, Colorado. Um uh, and they strapped me into this four-wheel bike, cinched me down to a seat, handlebars. They had me duct tape my prosthetics to them. You know, wow. couldn't get off if I wanted. Uh, took the brakes. <laughs> You're and re- going down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is happening. Yeah, rerouted the brakes to my thighs. Oh, so I had to squeeze whoa. them. Whoa. And I had my legs off, so I had like I had to squeeze my legs together to uh, slow myself down. And they popped the helmet on my head, and I said, well, okay, cool. Now what? They said, don't die. <laughs> said, what? <laughs> and they pushed me down That's, the mountain. Those are the instructions? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't die. And, uh. Uh, excuse me. So, um, so wow. I learned how to go kayaking that trip, mountain biking, paddling, like rafting, and I realized that you know I can do a lot of things. I, I, I like it's it's a hard pill to swallow or you know realization that I won't teach my son really how to throw a spiral. I won't play baseball like catch in the backyard with with him or my daughter with softball or um, I did teach her a little bit about soccer, but now mm-hmm. she can run circles around me. You know, when she first started when she was like four, I right. went and had short legs and stuff, but. Um, but you just take every day is like, how do I get better? But when I was on these trips, I was injured bad enough to um, need a non-medical assistant, they call it. So my wife had to go because I still need help put my legs on in the morning, buttoning in my pants, you know, and helping with stuff like that. So my wife got to go on these trips. But a lot of the guys, they, they are missing a leg below the knee or two legs, below, you know, above the knee, whatever. If they have hands, basically they're fine to go on these trips by themselves. And um, I thought, well, geez, you know, if it wasn't for my wife and my children, I wouldn't you know, be where I am today, who I am today. And uh, I was able to talk to Kelsey about giving back and starting a foundation. We started with care packages. And then uh, after going on all these trips and realizing that a lot of the families didn't get to go, I said, well, the families are a huge part of this, you know. So we decided to have a family camp. And we started this family camp and uh, it started with just one week of families for the year. We brought up two double leg amputees, one um, single amputee and two quads, me and my other buddy Taylor, who's the fifth and final one so far, and hopefully it stays that way. But uh, we had such a great time. We did it again the next year, and then in kind of just one thing turned another. I started speaking all over the nation, talking to companies like Lockheed Martin and Boeing and Allstate. And after I spoke, they gave my honorarium. They got involved in my nonprofit, so they'd be donating oh, wow, you know, money great. towards it. So we bought a facility. Elizabeth Arden, had, um, she was a cosmetic pioneer. Mm-hmm. Back in 1929, she <laughs> built this wonderful estate. And then, you know, in the 70s, she, it got sold. She, she passed away. It got sold. It went to dis- disarray and disrepair. And after two years of renovation, um, from 15 to 17, and $2 million and $2.5 million, something like that, dollars, we were able to open the Travis Mills Foundation um, Family Re- Veterans Retreat Center. And we bring up eight families per week from throughout the whole entire nation, uh, pay for all their, whole, like, all their trip. We brought up um, 89 families the first year. Wow. And we show them how to do things adaptively. Like, um, you know, if it's a service member that was – motorcycle accident while in service or blown up in combat it's paralyzation amputation spinal cord anything physical um we bring them up show them to do things adaptively let them know don't live life on the sidelines you know uh never think you can't do something and always be an active member in your family and society because these wonderful nonprofits like the garris nice foundation caring charitable foundation um Tullin towers foundation they 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 built my like garris nice foundation built my house for me like this adaptive house is you know really nice and they build these houses for critically injured guys that are they usually do like double again above um, or two amputations or more, but they build these houses and I thought, well, that's great. But now where do these guys go to like reconnect with people like they had at the hospital and you know, the Travis Mills foundation, um, that's where, that's where they come. They come here now. And like I said, 17 was 89 families. Last year was 131. Wow. And this year will be over 200 families to bring up at no cost. And I'm the president of the foundation and myself, my father-in-law is the vice president. My wife's on the board and everybody else on the board. No one takes a dollar. Like I don't make any income off the foundation. We're one of the top 25 veteran service organizations in the nation wow. out of 42,000. <clears> and um, it's all because people can see the mission, believe in the mission and understand that we're just giving back, doing the right thing. I mean, and, and Chubby's has been huge for, for me in general, because I, I took a picture, 
right? You guys, someone saw <laughs> yeah. my story on yeah. like the news, sent me some gear. I had American flag shorts, I think. Yep. Um, tank skies top. out, thighs yep. out, with drinking a beer. <clears throat> yeah. It was like ten in the morning. When I took the picture. I wasn't really drinking the beer. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, don't yeah. tell them. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, I'm not just not a beer fan. To be honest with you, the picture I was. Yeah. I'm more of a whiskey guy. But that's okay. Why I have so much hair on my chest. I'm like you. <laughs> but um, slick <laughs> Avery. It's nice. Dude. I'm aerodynamic. <laughs> yeah. No. No, I get it. <laughs> that's what's yeah. one word it. for. Yeah. 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 But it goes with your boy. Sensual. Yeah. Yeah. It's my whole thing. Mm. Okay, so <laughs> no, I'm uh, so I've been very thankful and and very fortunate and lucky to to have the life that I live now. Um, and people always wonder like, how can I say like I'm thankful or I'm lucky? And the truth is, um, th- there's a couple things in life that you have to remember. And, and one of them's uh, a life lesson I live by. If it's, there's two that I live by, I told you guys the one about the dwelling on the past and reminiscing is the difference. The other ones, um, you can always control your you can't always control your situation, but you can always control your attitude. So in the mornings, I wake up with no arms, no legs. But when I'm in my house in, in Maine, when I wake up, I get in my wheelchair. I throw my arm on off the charger. I go down the elevator with my daughter usually. We have breakfast. My wife comes down with my son a couple you know, minutes later or whatever. And I go about my day. I'm, uh, I happen to own three businesses, a couple with partnerships, but like three businesses, for profit and one nonprofit. So it, it's definitely life's not over for me. And you know the world's what you make it. So I do my best to just keep pushing forward and act like maybe – I, I don't see myself as handicapped as people. I mean, I, look, I take the parking. Okay. <laughs> like, you're damn right, I take the parking. But uh, I don't see myself every day as like, oh, look at look what happened. Poor me, pity me. And um, it's really helped me with my my overall well-being and just kind of pushing forward every day and live life to the fullest because you're not guaranteed tomorrow. But also, you don't, I, I don't dwell on the idea that, oh, this is my life when I'm like, well, I'm only 32. Like, I have probably 50-some years left, I would hope, and... Might as well keep keep doing great things, and that's why, um, you know, I'm excited to one be here. So thanks for having me out here, hey, in San Francisco. For but but also, you know, have my <laughs> my wife on my side help me push forward, and and uh, the great friends that I've I've made since my family members and stuff because uh, you know just life goes on. So just keep pushing. And then my slogan is never give up, never quit. And I was told by my speech coach, I'm the only one that can use a double negative and get away with it. <laughs> but, uh, but it but here to cool. break down barriers. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> It's fun, too. I mean, I think obviously you've done a lot of incredible things, but you just bring an awesome energy. Like, in addition to all the, you know, we've we've talked about a lot of the serious stuff and a lot of the important things that you're involved with, but you also just kind of bring the party, which is why I think it's such a fun thing to have you representing our brand and wearing our clothes because it's just, you know, you're doing all these things, but also you're here to have a kick-ass time and enjoy your life while you're here, you know? Well, yeah, and, and, and I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, now whenever I, I go on my boat um, back in Maine, we go on the lake and things like that, like if my son and me aren't matching and our chubby's shorts, <laughs> That's awesome. I'm like, what? come on. <laughs> yeah. What are we doing? Yeah. I'm like, Kelsey, what, this what, 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 what do we do? We do. We do. We leave them in the car. Uh, what yeah. do do? <laughs> Why is he wearing the blue ones with the flamingos and I have the alligators? Yeah. Like, he has the same work. ones. Like, yeah. what the heck? <laughs> um, you know, and uh, just, yeah, my daughter, she's in gymnastics and it's just, it's, uh, it, it's a fun time. Yeah, in, in the Mills household, but uh, yeah. you know we're just almost yeah. at that point with no diapers. Timmy so. and I were oh, lucky right? enough. Timmy and I were lucky enough to go, to go out to Maine and, and visit you, and that was one of the one of the most fun weekends I've had, I think, in my life. Because oh, not only are you just appreciate that, so yeah. inspirational to be around, but you're so much fun. <laughs> and we got to like shoot guns and like play with all your kick-ass toys. Did, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So snowmobiling and yeah. yeah, you got all these this cool stuff at your super sweet house well that was in the winter time too if you would came up like now this time of year we're I mean, coming yeah oh yeah we got side by sides we'll rip through I, some woods and I'm things gonna like be that there. i'm actually uh probably gonna trade my wife's in she doesn't use it so i'm gonna get a four-door razor probably because i got a two-door right now but she doesn't really use it because i have a but whatever anyway and then <laughs> <laughs> you're holding the camera right now but did you get in trouble for shooting that gun because because no because you were worried about your friends being a little bit upset with you i thought no i got i got some points Oh, oh, Timmy! Yeah. Timmy filming got got plus points. That's good. And by the way, if you do uh, want to learn more about the Travis Mills Foundation, the link is in chat in Twitch, and it will also be in the uh, notes when we post the podcast. Uh, a couple questions from the audience. Uh, this is Nara Tomato wants to know what's your favorite type of soup. <laughs> you know what? That's, no, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, uh, my wife's homemade chicken noodle soup is top notch. Nice. But then there's there's also uh, 
I'm just been getting into French onion soup. Lately. I was gonna say oh, French so onion. So good. Yeah. French onion's a great it's a choice. Fire yeah. soup. Really with that good. Crisp gotta layer on that, top. That yeah, cheese. You gotta pick off the yeah. side of the bowl. Oh yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. Onion is is cereal nice. soup though? That's kind of like a philosophical yes. question. Si- yeah. Seinfeld said he likes anything you can eat and drink with one hand at the same time without looking. That That's counts fair. as soup and cereal. That's yeah. fair. I like that one. Um, Ta- T. Monty. Tom wants to know what's your favorite fast food. Oh, jeez. Uh, I'll be honest. There's just so many. That's why my waistline is not where it needs to be. You guys <laughs> yeah. talking about like, oh, man, I'm going to get to 200. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to get down to 200, hopefully. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, I guess it's a very strong Taco Bell. Yes. You know, when I've been great choice. Great choice. Yeah. And then there's there's also, like, Chick-fil-A's huge. Yeah. Yep. Um, what are your thoughts on Wendy's? Yeah. Uh, what are yeah. your thoughts on the chicken sandwich Hold wars? On. Popeye's This is Wendy's. a loaded question. Yeah. Okay. All right. No, go ahead. So, Wendy's, the thing with Wendy's is because I have the one hand. The burgers are kind of messy for me to eat, uh-huh. so like uh-huh. I, I shy away. Okay, yeah. uh-huh. you hear that, Tom? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's what, what's the history here? Tom's yeah. dad owned like a Wendy's franchise. Oh, he's Tom, Wendy. Tom, yeah, well, no, no. Tom his is, father is Tom, Wendell. No, Tom is Wendy. His dad oh. named it after him. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> but the thing is, like, I do like <laughs> Wendy's. It's just the burgers are a little bit hard to. Eat. Like, mm-hmm. here's the thing. Mm-hmm. They do good nuggets. It's okay. okay. Thing, yeah, no, no. I got you. I don't want Tom to be upset. He's like, oh, he's gonna be furious. He's gonna storm in that door any second now. He's gonna kick the door in. But like Taco Bell, like Taco Bell, it's easy to hold a burrito with this fake can. You know what I mean? Yeah, perfect fit. But I'm not gonna sit there and say that. I don't go get a double bacon cheeseburger from McDonald's, yeah. you know, for a dollar twenty nine. That I think is the best deal in fast food, actually. Oh, Speaking yeah. of which, if you're listening, anyone from there sponsor us. Yeah, oh, I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> uh, Aiden K wants to know: Are you related to Phil? And even if not, how disappointed are you to even be associated with him? <laughs> with, with this Phil? Or <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. I think they're talking. I think because thank you, Aiden. Mills as well. Phil Mills. Yeah, Phil Mills. Everybody. Phil Mills, like, yeah, yeah. Mostly yeah. bees. Uh, I. I'm not upset at all. I think you're a wonderful person. Uh, maybe, he gets this. Maybe yeah. we're related. He gets this. Yeah, he could. And be I get this me. treatment. <laughs> well, we're. I think we that's are, unfair. Okay. That'd be, that'd if you go back in the ha- yeah. family tree, oh, yeah. I'm. I that's did. Something. I did a lot of research. Okay. Uh, on my phone a minute ago. Yep. Yeah. And it turns out we're definitely. What did you Google? Related. How yeah. close is Mills? <laughs> yeah. Mills yeah. tree. <laughs> maybe you. Uh, maybe you didn't realize this, but when you look at my hairline and your hairline. I'm just jealous. This is all jealousy based. Okay. My hair's falling out. It's like arms and legs. It's trying to leave. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna leave. Solid hairline, dude. You no, hairline. no. It's I took a picture of my head down. Look, I'm telling you what, I am not against Bosley or Restore. I go through Chicago I'm and it's all like Brian Urlacher has hair now, and I'm like, I'm doing it. I'm yeah, I, s- I know. It, There's no, I mean, you're, yeah. I've been on Propecia since college because my bro- I have a twin brother. His yeah. hairline is back here. So you just started it in college and you're like, let's get ahead of it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Uh, no, I'm not going to stop taking it. I, I wish, the, I wish that it had made your hair just grow Pro- forward. Proceeding, proceeding hairline. Yeah, the proceeding <laughs> hairline. Because it just turns into a helmet. It connects with your eyes. Eyebrows. Look at, yeah, exactly. Like You're just got Lego. eyes and right above it, your hairline. Boom. Base once told me that he guzzles Propecia, which is a <laughs> mental <laughs> image that disgusting. I love. Just, just pills as falling all over the can. place. <laughs> <laughs> Do not I'm like not, that. I'm not trying to lose my hair, dude. I need it. Doesn't Propecia <laughs> yeah. have some uh, less hair. than good side effects, potentially? Are you talking about, like, sex drive? Yes. Um, that would probably benefit me if I could ratchet this down okay. a little bit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> let's move on. Let's, okay. uh, let's uh, go uh, ahead. I mean, you get it. And let, let's yeah. change okay, the Mason. subject. <laughs> I don't think anyone would be upset. <laughs> what are you doing later? <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> this is like... HR. Kylie okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, let's let's move into let we may not ha- we may have to move the millennial zone to <sighs> next week because we have the well, the uh, speech starts in 20 minutes and I want to do some. This is the only time we're ever going to be able to do. We have some mills based trivia because we have two mills mm. here on the program. Facts. So we are going to do some just general mills trivia. It's not all about gen. You know what I mean? General mills. General mills trivia. trivia. Yeah. <laughs> Cereal. What Kellogg's is Kellogg's or General Mills? So general. first question uh, goes to Mason. Nice. Uh, which Mills has won a Purple Heart? <laughs> <laughs> Phil, Phil Mills, uh-huh. General Mills, right. or Travis Mills? Ooh, this is tough. It's, it's a not, tough one. It's, it's pretty easy. Travis Mills. Okay, Correct. that's Nailed right. It. That was Travis Nailed Mills. It. Okay, now which Mills quit because he felt like being a Broadway actor was too hard? <laughs> Would that be Travis Mills, <laughs> Phil Mills, or John Mills? <laughs> Who's this question for? Travis. Okay. Uh, well, I, I don't. I don't recall doing that personally. <laughs> yep. Well, you were on drugs <laughs> when you were in the hospital. 
<laughs> are, you you really, can't be, are you are you really gonna throw that I was on drugs? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Phil. I was that thinking, is correct. I was thinking it was John, but now yeah, I'm gonna go with no, Phil. it is. That was Got indeed it. Phil. He bowed out. <laughs> he he did juice. give up. <laughs> oh, well, in a manner of speaking. There's so many words. This is too hard. Okay, Phil. Now my question to you is: yeah, Where, yeah, yeah, yeah. where is Mills College? Danbury, Connecticut, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, or Oakland, California? The only hard question. Yes. <laughs> Mills College is in, um, it's actually in Oakland. <laughs> That's actually correct. Oh. So everyone has one. Nice. 30% chance. You everyone said, has you one. You said it confidently, too. Yeah, I, yeah, I believed it. I was like, wow. That's, that's good. Yeah. I figured that you only knew that because you're from the Bay Area. I uh, just, local. I Googled Mills. Oh, okay. where I got so uh, that was just some of this shot in the yeah. dark. All right, it so was. we're all tied up. All, all right. tied up. So this, w- this question is to Mason. Okay. Uh, which Mills started a foundation to help recalibrated <laughs> veterans and their families through long-term <laughs> programs that <laughs> help them overcome physical physical obstacles, mm. strengthen their families, and provide well-deserved right. rest and relax. Would that be Travis Mills, Phil Mills, maybe, right. or Millie Vanilli? <laughs> <laughs> That's how I've heard about this. It's Travis Mills. That's correct. Okay. You're doing well. I'm so Mason two. has two. Now, this question is to Travis. Mm-hmm. Which Mills used to sell bush lights out of the trunk <laughs> of a car at fish concerts? <laughs> Would that be Travis Mills, uh-huh. Phil Mills, or Stephen Mills? Ah, oh, Jesus. Uh, I think Phil. <laughs> yeah, that is correct. It was a great deal because they were only a dollar. Yep. That is <laughs> because we, we didn't have any yep. ice. And they were, so they were really I'm they were just really trying warm. to chart your you, similar yeah. paths. Yeah. Is that where you <laughs> you're a your love yeah. Yeah. You know, warm yeah. beer? It's actually a coincidence. Yeah. Yeah. But that's I'm right. once again drinking a warm <laughs> yes. beer. That might be why you always, like, you never put the beer in the fridge and you're satisfied with warm beers. I'm not happy about it. But you're not as upset Would you take a bush light for a buck at a concert? You can't take ten. Yeah, there we go. absolutely. There, I actually saw a guy. I went to a Rolling Stones concert on Sunday, and there was a dude who literally looked like you aged 40 years selling beer out of the <laughs> trunk of a car at Levi's Stadium. Had and I was like, that could have been Phil if you just stuck to it. it. You know what? It, might, it still might be. I know. And here's the thing. Had he lost his Tevas? <laughs> I, I don't know. Because I lost mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> On day one of that festival. You were, you were barefoot. Uh, drinking too much of your merch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't get high. No, it's <laughs> fly. How do you <laughs> lose strapped <laughs> sandals? That's insane. <laughs> Listen. There's no reason to take them off, and they're stra- – anyway. I uh, don't know is the answer. <laughs> this question is to Phil. Which Mills was dubbed the most influential English-speaking philosopher of the 19th century? Hmm. Uh, C. Wright Mills. Phil Mills or John Stewart, John Stewart Mill. Mill. I actually okay. know that one. What Phil the got hell? that one right. The but, two uh, toughest questions. Phil, you were nailing this. I'm, I Are you feel sure like you're not a doctor? I'm doing well, but I don't like what I'm hearing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the light I'm seeing myself in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, Mason, okay. yeah. this question's for you. Which Mills quit sports at the age of 15 to start a pop punk band? Travis Mills, Phil Mills, or Richie Mills? Richie Mills. Trick question. It's Travis Mills, but a different Travis Mills. Mm-hmm. Oh! oh! Yes, that, that is, very is tough. everyone's favorite uh, artist, T. Millie, or T. Mills. I don't know. T. Yeah, Mill. Yeah, yeah, he went by yeah. something, but his name's Travis Mills. He hosts some problem. stupid show now. Here's yeah, a big problem. He comes like me. Google him. <laughs> if you guys happen to know Rob Deerdeck yep. or anybody at Ridiculousness, they and anybody listening, help me out here. I think Rob owes me a favor because I used to come up first in the search ah. until he put that. Uh, rapper from California, Travis yeah. Mills, on his show, and now I he beats you. His picture pops up. I think my found my website pops up first. He's got a very different org. look. <laughs> yeah, he oh, does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Travis, Travis Barker. Yes, yeah. yeah. He, like, he's got. A, he's one of those guys who's got the big tall hair for some reason. Yeah, yeah. But Damn if you guys it. know Rob Deerdeck, let him know. Frick. Yeah. To, yeah. yeah. Any I'm Rob Deerdeck fans, let him know. So, yeah, Mason has lost one. Now, this one's to that Travis. Which Mills failed to read the book his father wrote, even though it's really not even that long, <laughs> and he has <laughs> promised to do so and has had plenty of time to do so and haven't, but I think Devin has. <laughs> would that be Patty Mills, Travis Mills, or Phil Mills? Question. Um, Devin would be... Right here. Dev right there. Producer Dev. Oh, Producer are Dev. Are you guys related by chance? Me and no. Devin? Devin no. Chuckled. I was just, just saying Dev Devin read the book. Oh, you read it. He read yeah, Phil's he dad's book, but Phil oh, so didn't. Phil, so Phil must have done <laughs> I think he gave it away. <laughs> ah, yes, I did. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> the questions are getting easier. <laughs> yes. I read the other book, and I own the other one. I've leafed through it. It's very technical. Leafed through it. <laughs> it's got a lot Devin, of... Devin, was it a good book? 
Okay. Devin says it's a good book. Uh, okay, so Phil, this one actually, you, Phil surprisingly is going to get out of this. This popular phrase means a useful experience, and it is blank for the mill. Wind, grist, or shit. Grist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you don't like shit for the mill? <laughs> I do like that expression. <laughs> shit for the mill. Listen, so, this is going to be some <laughs> shit for, for the three. mill. So it's <laughs> actually Travis versus Phil. So it's Mills versus Mills oh, in our tiebreaker. A mills nice. off. It's a Mills off. Yeah. And the tiebreaker <laughs> yeah. is what was General Mills' net sales figures in 2014? Closest answer wins. Cool. Wow. Cool. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> yeah. This is tense. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. You first, buddy. Uh,. I have absolutely got to say something. Okay, two hundred and fifty million dollars. Okay, I might be way off. Travis can't be right. He's shaking his head. Two hundred and fifty-one million. That's Brilliant so move. That's a smart a move. Brilliant move. And it That's will win. Correct. The answer is nineteen point two billion. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I, the only prize that I <laughs> have is be. some dry uh, honey nut Cheerios because it's uh, General Mills. Oh no, you can't say thing. no. To oh. Honey nut, oh, and the honey nut Cheerios. For <laughs> 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 <Or> that. <laughs> no there's also warm beer. Here. I uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I definitely watched Prices Right. So I knew exactly why. That I was you played right. that. I was very trying to go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like like I really wanted you to go first. Like yeah. so very smart. Bet my one up or one down. Very smart, and he didn't go over. Uh, no. So we'll have I was to way do. Under. We'll do uh, way under. the the Millennial Zone next week about Disneyland. You've got about 15 minutes until you yeah. have to speak. But do you have any any uh, final questions or anything else you'd like to? <sighs> Promote Travis. Um, I think I said the life book? lessons that I've learned. Oh, I, Travis yeah, has a I podcast a, as well. I have, I have a podcast I'm working on. Yes. Um, I think the next segment we're going to start is uh, bet on yourself. So the new ones that come out is like how people should bet on themselves and um, well, what they did to bet on themselves and things like that. Uh, besides for that, I appreciate you having me. It's been a lot of fun. Um, TravisMills.org for our Travis Mills needs, and I have a documentary. That was on Netflix, but they took it off because the two-year run was up, but you can find it. So, like I said, TravisMills.org for all your Travis Mills needs. Yep, and we'll link to everything in yeah. uh, in the show notes. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, I think well, that's I can't it. thank you enough was, for coming yeah. out and being on the podcast. I, th- I think the yeah. coolest thing about this brand is that you know it attracts people like you to it and that we actually get to spend some time with you and uh, become friends. It's really remarkable. So, thank you so much oh, man, for everything. Awesome. And you're coming back for the su- You guys all coming for I'm the summer? I'm there in the summer. There, I, was, I just was up there. If I, I, I Careful what no, you're looking for. I'm going to be there. Yeah. Next next time we do We're this, we'll do a, we'll do a thing. podcast in Maine. Yeah, we should do is go Ooh. up. We, yeah, I was gonna say we should always just like make sure we go up every. Single Chubby's Roadshow Part yeah. Three, Maine with Travis. That would be that so would be much right. fun. You guys could rent an RV and drive all. Yeah. That would oh, yeah. be yeah. sick. It's a quick drive from here to Maine. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah. shoot right through. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be 100 percent honest with you. When I go camping, it, it when I'm roughing it. It's uh, there's a Starbucks that not in the lobby. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's like a different coffee brand, but I get it. I'll, I'll make it work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But no, Mason's been a great host. Uh, we got the Nan King House of Nan King. Yeah. Oh, it was today. awesome! Shout out to House of yeah. Nan King. Yeah, Fantastic phenomenal. Chinese right. food. We that was order. great. They just knew what we wanted. Yeah. Those it's pork dumplings, I tell you what, I wasn't so, I, I don't think I've ever been so excited. <laughs> I, uh, like beef jerky is one thing that will get me in jalapeno bratwurst. Mm. And now House of Nanking, I get that whole Pavlov's dog thing going. I start <laughs> mouth sweat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh. That's they something brought, they yeah. do really well here. This Chinese food is to impossible to beat. Yeah. That they do. Yeah. Chinese food yeah. is the best. Well, thank you, Travis Mills. We'll have you on again soon. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, we'll be back next week. Yeah. All right. All right.